Uh, good morning. Um, thanks uh, to, to the Casa de Lector and Fundación Germán Sánchez Ruy Pérez for inviting the Spanish Ministry of Culture in order to be here with you and to share these uh, ideas on our project for, for Frankfurt. As you know, Spain will be guest of honor this, uh, this next October in Frankfurt. It's the um, most important book fair in order to, to, um, to deal with the, with the rights around, around books. Um, yesterday, we had the Spanish National Committee that approved the literary program um, that was informed about the professional program and that approved the cultural program. Um, we are some departments in the, in the government, of course, culture, but of course, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, and also the Budget uh, Ministry and Economics Ministry, but also the sector, the publishers, the uh, bookstore, the distributors, the authors, of course, and we are doing a very big effort, but why? Um, this is why I, what I intended to explain today to you, in which part of our strategy is uh, insert uh, our, our way to, to Frankfurt. So now we are doing a panoramic about the, the publishing sector in, in Spain. Of course, um, we are an island now in Spain. The book sector is an island, and what we want is that this island um, it's not going to be conjunctural, but uh, structural, because the sector is going well now in Spain, despite all the situation regarding the Russian uh, war in Ukraine and the, um, the growth of the, of the prices in the energy that, of course, is going to arrive also to the, to the book sector. But now we are uh, looking back in 2020. Book sales uh, almost arrived to, uh, to um, 2,500 million euros, and we have these uh, this digital book sales. And uh, books contributed, um, we, if we have uh, also the intellectual property, more than 1%, 1.2% more or less. And uh, we are so strong also in the net value of our book exports uh, abroad. Regarding the, um, the panoramic of the book sector in, in Spain, we almost have 800 publishing houses in Spain. You know that we have two main uh, publishing groups here in Spain and a lot of small and uh, medium-sized um, publishing houses, independent publishing houses in, in Spain. And the sales of, uh, of um, of sale rights abroad reached uh, 73 uh, million euros. How is this divided um, regarding um, the types of uh, publishing in Spain? Of course, we are very, very strong in literary creation and children and young adults that has a very good behavior abroad. But we are uh, in the national um, publishing very strong in social sciences, humanities, scientific and technicals. And we are now doing an effort in export and translation of this type of, uh, of publishing because we are not doing uh, still as good as we think we can, we can reach. Uh, as you know, in Spain we have a main language, Spanish, but we also have other official languages and, of course, creators and publishers use also these languages and, of course, readers, readers too. Um, we have this bridge to, or we are this bridge to Latin America with this Spanish, as you know, we share, we share language, and we almost publish the 80% of the published in, uh, books in Spain are in Spanish, but also the 20% are in other language, uh, official languages or not official as Asturian, that is uh, uh, protected in the, um, what we say, Estatuto de Autonomía de Asturias, but is not yet official. So we have a very big plurality of languages in what we publish. Regarding uh, gender of, uh, of writing, still male authors are um, 
more than female authors, but these are numbers of the 20 and 20. Uh, today we know that uh, this uh, uh, type of percentage is, uh, is changing and females are writing more because as we will see later, females, we are reading more than, than males. Um, turning back to 2021, and regarding, as, uh, as Luis said, um, the regarding habits in Spain, we are implementing um, a national plan for reading in Spain. We think that, uh, we almost say here in Spain that uh, Spanish we don't read. Um, this is not true. Of course, we could read more and, and we want to, to, to be near the standards of some European countries that we still are not there. But uh, we have, uh, in the last uh, 10 years, we are uh, uh, this, um, this increment, 1%, 1.5% each year in the last 10 years. And this is a constant increase, increase of, uh, of, of reading. More or less, 75% um, of people read for leisure, the other tell us, in a panoramic uh, um, that we do with the publishing sector every year, with interviews with the Spanish uh, uh, population, read for, for work, for um, duty, or for other reasons. More than 50% uh, in Spain in the 2020 were frequent readers. Um, at least once a week. Um, of course, you have here the figures, but what is important is during the pandemics here in Spain, we read much more than, than before. More hours per day, more people started reading, and what we are now trying is that, people, that, that these people that started to read during the pandemics stay in the reading. So, so we are doing this effort in trying to keep these people in, in reading. Um, it's not the same because we think that is the reverse of the, of the coin, of the money, but it's not the same, but uh, we think that you have the, the sale and purchase of books and the reading um, reading books. It's not exactly the same because sometimes people buy books um, to, to have at home and not to, to read, and sometimes people um, uh, read um, books, of course, that are in libraries. So it's not exactly, but more or less, more than 50% of the population bought, uh, bought books in 2021. That is more or less the percentage of readers, is more the percentage of readers, but more, more, more or less. Um, regarding the libraries in, in Spain, they are so well um, valued for the users in, in libraries here in Spain, but we still haven't reached the, um, the pre-pandemic levels of attendance to, to libraries, but we are in the, in the way to, to do it. And we have a um, very significant percentage of people that tell us that don't want to read, that can't read. And this is not for the alphabetical thing. In Spain, this is just residual with older, older people. But people who don't like reading, they tell us that they don't like reading, that they prefer spend their time doing a sport or going out or something else, or that they can't afford to read. So what we are doing with the public policies is try to overcome all these obstacles. Uh, for example, to have more books in public libraries and, and to do more accessible uh, for the citizenship to, to read uh, um, reading with digital libraries too that we implement for the Ministry of, of Culture. Um, trying to explain the importance to, to reading of course, in the childhood and the, and the young adult, and here Luis is helping us a lot with all the research that he is doing here in Casa de Lectora and Fundación, Germán Sánchez, Ruy Pérez, in order to understand why people don't want to, to read. Because when it's because they can't, we can do something. Because, but when it's because they don't want to, 
is so hard for us. So we have to do a lot of pedagogy and a lot of importance in order to uh, explain that reading is at the base of our development as, uh, as people, as citizens, and also as democratic society. Our, our reading promotion plan is called Endless Reading. This is why there's a book, I don't know if you know it, um, El Infinito en un Junco uh, from Irene Vallejo is this nice uh, story of books. It's a, a very nice uh, read, the, read and sell the, uh, essay here in Spain. It's so translated, so you could maybe know it. And we did this homage to, to, to Irene Vallejo with this endless reading. At the very heart of this uh, um, new promotion, reading promotion plan, there's the idea of a pact. It's so important that the promotion of reading, of reading is not seen by society or by the sector just as another reading promotion uh, program of the government. It's not that. It's a social and citizen pact. So, in the last uh, Liber Fair here with the publishers, um, we do, we did, not this political pact, but this citizenship uh, pact. And we uh, constructed, we built this, uh, this, um, this path together with the, with the sector, with the publishers, with libra librarians, with authors, in a group, in a working group, with, in an open working group uh, in the Ministry of, of Culture. Also at the very beginning is this uh, change of the concept of, of reading. We are always so, um, I don't know the word, uh, encorsetados, close about our, our concept of reading. It's reading in paper, in a book, at home, um, or a, at a library. It's not just that. Of course, this is in, in the core of, uh, of the concept of reading, but this is a new and wider concept of reading that we wanted to to bring to this pact in order to arrive to a new generation of reading. They read different from us. Of course, they read written books, but of course they read uh, with this uh, um, social medias that we, at, at least I'm not used to, to, to do it. Um, we wanted, of course, to change um, the mood in the society about what we do in reading. Uh, people do read in Spain. Of course, we, we want to read more, we want to read better, we want to understand better what we read, but we read. And this is a um, constant in the last year in Spain, and we um, have to be, if not proud of it, satisfied with, uh, this, with this changement. Of course, we wanted to explain that reading uh, begins with creation. So this means that we have to dignify the profession uh, and the, and the, of the authors, uh, writers, illustrators, translators, and um, we are working with that, with a um, change in the laws that we call the statute for the artists and creators regarding labor laws, tax law, Etc. in order to dignify um, in the recognition of the society, but also in the economic and, uh, and labor laws that we have in Spain. And of course, multiple alliances. We can't do a pact for reading if we don't count with uh, um, the towns, the cities, the autonomous communities, the publishing sector, the writers, the schools, the families, the universities. So this is why this is an open pact in order that everyone to wants, uh, that wants to, to, to be here can, can be here. Um, then we will return to this reading has no borders that is so important uh, in, this, in our strategy. And, um, and of course, to, to last point, extending reading in the countryside. You know here in Spain, we have this uh, uh, populated periphery and this populated uh, center, but we have a lot of countryside with no a lot of people. So we want that they um, be equal 
in the access to, to reading. So we are doing this effort um, in accessibility in this area, in these areas not so crowded. And of course, sustainability. The future of, uh, of book and reading is sustainable or it won't be. So we are trying uh, to, to do this research and studies along with the sector in order to, to, to find how can we be more sustainable in our industry and of course in our way of, of reading. What we do in order to achieve of all that? Of course, we've, we, we have what I called the structural grants. This is what is in our ordinary budget almost every day, can change. Uh, we can uh, do better in some points, but this is what we do in the Ministry of Culture, in my department, in order to, um, to, to foster the, the sector. We have grants to literary creation, to publishing of cultural magazines, to publishing of books, uh, modernization of books uh, of bookshops, and to non-profit institutions like this one, um, in order to strengthen uh, the publishing industry. And what is so important for us, because of the um, of the importance of the Spanish language, is the, the grants for translations. Um, we can do better. We are uh, doing better in the last years, but uh, still have a, a lot of work to do. We have these grants into other languages of the state, um, together, for example, from Catalan to Galician and from Spanish to, to Basque, uh, to Esquera. So we do these grants. In the last two years, we are working with, with this. And into foreign language, um, targeted to to foreign publishers in order that they could publish our, our authors with some public help. And regarding our path to, to Frankfurt, we have these specific grants for translation that are implemented for uh, Acción Cultural Española. Uh, since 2019, uh, more than 300 Spanish literary works have been translated into German thanks to this translation. And more than the half of these 300 Spanish literary books with public ads. So I think public policies matter in order to help uh, the translation. As you know, after the pandemics in the European Union, we have been working with uh, um, this G uh, European Union recovery funds. And we have worked with it. We, we still haven't finished. But uh, until now, we have worked with them, with the sector, with the publishing sector, listening what they needed in order to be prepared, um, just in case we don't know what is going to happen in the future. We don't know. We had the pandemics after we are in this, uh, in this uh, um, Russian war in Ukraine, what we wanted to do with, this, with these European Union funds was to, to prepare or to help to prepare the sector in order to face whatever can come in the future. So what have we done until now? We used part of these uh, European um, recovery funds in order to promote international mobility for literary authors. We started last year with, with that and we are continuing this, this year. Also, we use them in order to have this um, um, help to modernization of a small and medium-sized enterprises in the book sector, in the whole economical and um, um, value uh, book sector in Spain, all the ecosystem, the book ecosystem, and the digitalization of publishing content because we, we realized that during the pandemics we had no new books, but we had uh, these, um, these books that the publishing houses had, and some of them, a lot of them, had them digitalized, but a lot of them hadn't. So we are helping them in order to have all all, all the books uh, digitalized in order to can have another way of selling it and to put at the disposal of the, of the readers. And one 
of the strategy, of the most important strategy, is the internalization, uh, or internationalization of our sector. What we want if, is to be more visible in an international level, um, to have more economical um, contacts in the international level, and we started to, to be more and with more authors and publishers in the international festivals and book fairs. So being a guest of honor country is one way of, um, of um, having the, the focus uh, in your country and of course in your authors and in your publishing sector. Um, last year we were in Sarja, uh, in Emiratos Árabes, in Arabic Emirates, and this is so unusual for, for us. Why? Because we don't have a very strong cultural connection, but we thought that uh, maybe in this context of, of the pandemics, we, we wanted to try a new international market for our authors. And the, the answer uh, and the behavior of the, of the market was impressive. I think we were all surprises, surprised, but because all the young adult uh, um, illustrated album, um, childhood uh, writing, all the rights were sold. So this was so impressive and showed us that we can do it well. Uh, we can do it well in markets that are not so, so common for the Spanish publishing sector. This year and we are now reaching with the title of, uh, of this panel, uh, we are guest of honor in the Frankfurt Book Fair. As, uh, as you know, it's the most important book fair in the world, and not just that. Spain was um, guest of honor country in Frankfurt 31 years ago. So what we want, of course, having uh, the literary um, authors and the publishers at the very head, because it's a professional fair, is to show how, how we have changed as a country in these 31 years in the literary and publishing sector, in the cultural sector in a, in a wider way, and of course as a country, as society, as democracy, and in the economic way. We feel that we are not well known we want that you think that we are nice people, you can have a drink with us, but we also want to sign a contract. Our publishing sector wants to, to of course, be at Frankfurt, at be with uh, um, the international distributors of, of, or with partners and colleagues of other countries, but also to sell rights, to sign uh, contracts, and to show the professionality of the publishing sector in Spain. That is a reality, but we need this opportunity in order to show it, and that uh, not just the people who attend the fair, but uh, all, all the citizenship see this changement in, in the Spanish society and as we are as a, as a country. So this is an opportunity and this is a celebration, of course, of literature after the, the pandemics. And then I will return to, to Frankfurt. In November, just after being at, uh, at Frankfurt, we will be at Slovenia. Why we are going to be at Slovenia as guest of honor country? Um, first of all, because in the handover ceremony here in Frankfurt this year, we are, um, the next count, guest of honor country will be Slovenia. So we wanted to, to be closer to them. And then, because we realized that even if Slovenia is a very small country, it's the gate to Eastern Europe. Europe. So this is so important in, the, in our uh, translation strategy also. So this is why we are going to be there in November. In February next year, we are going to be in, in India, in the Kolkata Book Fair. Why again? So, seeing our, our experience last year in Sarja and seeing um, that Spanish is now um, 
been so, so, so important in not just a country, but a subcontinent as India is, we wanted to be there with our publishers in order to, to support all the translations and not yet the translation, the presence of Spanish books now that are being in India. So we will be in India in 2023. And then in 24 and 25, we are returning to our natural market, that is Latin America. We are going to be guest of honor country at the field in Guadalajara in 2024 and in Filbo in Bogota, in Colombia in 2025. Why this long uh, and not now? A pandemic has affected to, to all the countries in a different way and in the book sector in these countries also in a different way. Here in Spain, uh, together with the, with the publishing sector, we saw that uh, the exports to our natural and principal market that together with Europe is Latin, Latin America um, has been um, very difficult for us. So we thought that the full recovery in this exportation will be in these years. So we uh, managed to be a guest of honor country in these years that we think this the very good opportunity to our sector in Latin America and to, um, to have this presence again in, in Latin America. And now returning to, this is the international strategy that we have planned for the, for the, for the next next years. And returning to, to Frankfurt, it's not now that I, I have to, to explain it because on the 9th of June, the Ministry of Culture in the Goethe Institute here in, in Madrid will explain all the, the, the program, the literary program and the cultural program for, for Frankfurt. But now I can tell you that we are having now, and it's not close yet, uh, more than 400 publishing houses, more than 200 authors, and more than 50 uh, literary and professional tables during the fair. Also, we are working in the public libraries in Frankfurt all through the fair because we wanted that our authors were present in not just in the professional sector but also with the citizens and the readers in, in Germany and also with our Instituto Cervantes that we have five uh, along Germany. We are going to have this uh, uh, tournée of uh, authors uh, and presentation of books and translations. Yesterday, the um, the Frankfurt Book Fair called us and told us that our previsions of trans translations to German were, um, a um, were better and that uh, we thought, well, I, I'm not going to, to give you the, the exact number because I want the ministry to say it uh, uh, next week, but it's more than the, it's the double that we have thought at the beginning of the year. So we are happy because, as you know, translation strategy is so important for, for the Frankfurt Book Fair. All of this is a very, very, very uh, slight panoramic of our public policies, always listening the um, publishing sector and the authors on, and always searching two things, visibility, op economical opportunity, and uh, celebration of proud of our moment of literary creation. This is why the motto for Frankfurt is spilling creativity. And I hope to see a lot of you in, in Frankfurt and thank you very much. <laughs>